on the server we are going to add a printer and share it so let's add a printer and next and we are going to add a local printer attached to this computer this is not a network printer although it is a printer that we can print to through IP it's still going to be a local printer attached to this local computer what's that it's kind of connected to it, yeah. Physical wires still make it there. Did you uncheck the automatic Yeah, don't automatic detect, because it's not going to be able to automatically detect it, because it's not plugged into a physical port like these. Now, we are going to create a new port, and we're going to create a new standard TCP IP port. And next, make sure the device is turned on and connected and configured. Okay, so configured. The printer that we're adding is actually configured with an IP address, 192.168.10.252. And the port name, you can name it whatever you want, but I like to leave it default, IP underscore, and then the IP address. And it's probably going to give me an error message saying, this port already exists. Boom. So choose another port name. We'll just put A after this. Because you probably didn't have a printer installed on your file on your main domain controller. You probably installed on another thing. Yeah. Okay, so what do you have a problem, Oliver? No, I've just never seen this box and I've done this Okay. Alright, so it says here's the port, here's the device, here's the port name. The port name again, I said you could call anything you want. And I had to put an A after it because I already had that port existing on this computer. And it automatically notices that, hey, it's an HP Jet Direct. It did a little uh, ping to it and it responded and knew exactly what protocol it accepts. We hit next. And we choose what type of printer. And I think that's a 4250, right? So I think the 4100 series works just fine. So select HP for manufacturer, printer 4100. If you had the actual disk, I would recommend installing the correct driver. But if you don't, then usually an older driver will work on a newer printer. That's usually how it works. Yes? What's the difference between the PCL and PCS? Good, good uh, question. PCL is uh, printer control language and PS is PostScript. And typically you have to look at the type of printer and what it accepts. Most of the time they're PostScript printers, but some of them are PLC printers. So you, you have to kind of know what the printer is to, to know whether you use PS or PCL. Some printers come with both drivers, or both uh, languages. The really cheap ones don't, yeah. That's why you have to use their proprietary driver software. All right, so we hit next. Anna asked us, what's that? Okay, it says, uh, you already have this driver. Do you want to keep it? Yes, I've already used this driver. Keep the existing driver. Because what it does is, um, the newer versions of Windows now has all these drivers installed in a cab file on the local hard drive. They come with it. So we don't have to run around and look for disks any longer. So we're going to keep the existing driver, if you have it. If not, it won't ask you for it. And it wants a name. Now. I recommend you, you you choose the naming scheme just like anything else. It's going to make sense. So I'm going to name this based on room and then model. So this is going to be room 201 dash HP LaserJet 4250. So it identifies the room as far as where it's located. This could be like marketing or market or MKT dash and then the model or HR if it was an HR department things like that that would make sense warehouse WHS something like that hit next and we want to share it and it wants a very short name eight characters long so we could just go 201-HP 4250 that's gonna be there
Or we could just go, since 201 only has one HP laser jet, we could do that. And if it were a color laser jet, we just do color laser jet. So, whatever you want. You can use a longer share name if you want to, but some older operating systems won't recognize that longer share name being more than eight characters. So it kind of becomes um, a problem if you do have a lot of older operating systems that would be using this, or Linux systems as well. If you have only an entire autonomous system being just Windows, then and they're all the latest Windows XP or newer, or Windows 2000 or newer, you can use as long of a share name as you want to. So keep that in mind. Hit next. And location, this gives a little more information. We can go room 201, comment. Please print using duplexing. Both sides. All right. Do you want to do a test page? No, not right now. But we will print a test page here shortly as soon as we get it working. So hit next. And finish. It gives you a little summary. That's what I want set up. And now it's done. Let's right click on this and select properties. You're still copying files? Okay. And if we if you're done, look at properties and go to sharing tab, and you can see that this printer is shared and it's also listed in the directory. So all they have to do is search for a printer from the workstation and they should be able to add it. Now we also have an option down here where it says drivers. It says this is, if this printer is shared with users from different versions of Windows, you may want to install additional drivers. So let's take a look, additional drivers. Right now the drivers that were installed support multiple operating systems and you can see what they are. By default, it supports Windows 2000, XP, and server. So if your clients are any more than those, you would need to choose some other additional driver and have a disk for it. So if you had older Windows 95, 98 computers, you'd have to check this mark right here. And then if you hit OK, it would ask you for the disk that had those drivers. But since we have Windows XP and Windows 2000, we don't need to choose additional drivers. So we're good to go there. But that's how you would add additional drivers. We're going to cancel on that. It's already listed in the directory. Just kind of looking around. Ports. If you take a look, there's the description. And you can see that it's using the IP 192.68.10.252A port number. You go to advanced. We'll take a look. We can see the driver. We can always change the driver. And we can identify that we want to start printing after the last page is spooled. Spooling print documents means that on the C drive of this computer, of this server that's sharing the printer, it's going to store the print job. These print jobs can get up into several hundred megabytes in size, especially when you're talking about a color print job that is more than 10 pages. You can have pretty large print spool files. So keep that in mind if you are short on disk space on the C drive, you may want to change the location where the print spool is located. You might want to change it to a drive that has plenty of storage that can temporarily store a print spool from clients. Because if you have 10 people printing 10 page colored documents, that's a gigabyte of storage you're going to use up approximately. Just guessing on, on size there. So keep that in mind. Um, you can go to separator page where it will actually print a page, a separator page at the beginning of each document saying, you know, confidential information, the property of so-and-so corporation, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe even show the person's username, things like that. You can actually use a document there. What's that? Yeah, you can use like a Word doc yep, or a separator page. Once, now, once that page is printed, that's... So what happens is if I print, if I print, it'll print the separator page, and then all my print job, and then when you print, it'll print the separator page, and then.